It's too muddy to um, drive across the field and uh, check the bees, so I have to take the kid wagon and I come across and I weigh all my uh, all my nukes, um, scrape the bottom boards, identify who's the strongest, identify who weight, weighs the least and might need food or um, or have a, a surplus. And this uh, this yard, I have uh, 21 colonies in five frame equipment, and I started the winter with. Uh, also with four colonies in double deeps and as of uh, today I am at 100% uh, alive of the five frame equipment ones and three out of the four survived the winter in the double deeps so I think it's time for the people to uh, think about the overwintering part of beekeeping as the priority and the honey part as the, as the secondary thing because um, I ensure that these colonies are, are all, uh, all queen right and in the right equipment by, by August and then from, uh, from if they're not up to weight I'll start I'll start feeding them um, depending upon how the golden rod flow is and be done by September and then these all had a, um, about an average of 75 pounds of, uh, of uh, total weight in each of these colonies each of these, these nukes I'm talking about except for one on the end over there the fifth of that group which had I'd got another five frames underneath it which I just took off and now and when I weigh them all, I've, I would say on here I haven't done the math yet with a calculator, but it looks like I've lost an average of 25 pounds of weight. And so um, most of these are still good for a few weeks. So the lowest one weighs about 38 pounds. Uh, highest one weighs about 56. And um, I'm pretty pleased with the strength of them. They're um, um, a good number of them. I've got bees that come down all the way into the second part of the box and um, the great majority of them have got bees all over the top frames too so that's a that's a good sign for the upcoming season so if they can survive this past winter it just doesn't make sense to me to overwinter in double deeps for the same amount of resources you could have Four, uh, two colonies. So if you think of it this way, this one's alive and this one's alive, and that's 40 frames of resources. Yet yeah, these are all alive, 40 frames of resources. I've got four here and two there. Would you rather have two colonies or would you rather have four colonies? Well, if you're greedy like me, you'd rather have four. But that's that's what it is. When, the, the other thing I want to talk about is um, I think that what, sometimes in the spring you see people go to the garden centers and uh, and start buying and planting planting seeds and uh, the seeds of course will respond and start to grow and then uh, they'll do it too soon and they'll do it too soon and there'll be a frost and it'll set them all back and that's kind of how I feel about um, spring spring feeding. I don't want to, the, these bees to be stimulated to do anything other than what they what they would in in the natural world. And okay, sure, they came from Europe, they didn't come from the States, but um, what that means to me is I don't want to, I won't bother um, unless they're starving giving them anything until the maple bloom starts in a couple of weeks. If the maple bloom starts and they start to raise brood in abundance and I think they're low I'll give them some pollen patties but I have no intention of putting on any stimulative feeding to get them jumped up and hopped up too soon. The best thing about um, this situation is that these bees are here in uh, Wisconsin could just as well be Minnesota and they are here and they are just dependent upon our weather and our care. They are not sitting yet to be born in California.
They're here, they're ready to go. If I can do it, you can do it.